got started, I'm going to shut her right back down. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to God's house. Isn't God good? Amen. Beautiful day. All the time? All the time. God's good. Amen. What a great God that we uh, serve and we love. He is our God. What a, what a great God. Uh, ladies, uh, I thank you for the song this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for blood. Yes. What a beautiful thing. I really appreciate that. I appreciate all that God's doing for us right here at the house of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 68, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Wow. Wow, the presence of the Lord. You know, when you think about old Moses over there, and as God came a-knocking, and as he got his attention, and the Bible says the bush burned, but wasn't consumed. Now, it's not unusual for a bush to burn. Matter of fact, I've uh, kind of set a few of them on fire myself. So bushes will burn. Amen? But they burn up, but not this one. And it was such a sight that it got his attention, and he paused for a moment and turned to see, as the Bible says. And when he turned to see, he heard the voice. Well, God said, just take off your shoes for the ground which you stand on is holy ground. Amen. He goes before the Lord, and as he's standing in the presence of God, and by the way, I mentioned this morning about Brother Peter, when he's looking into the storm, the problem was not looking into the storm, but he took his eyes off the Lord. Because Jesus is in the storm, as if he was in the bush that was burning. And so here he is, he's standing before the Lord, he's talking, and God's told him to take off his shoes because the ground he's standing on is holy ground. You know? And what is Moses' desire? To see the Lord. I'm here to tell you, if you want to see the Lord, well, number one, get right with him. Get right with him. Get them shoes off. You stand on holy ground. Number two, number two, as God reveals himself to you and you begin to see and witness what God is and what he can do and everything, amen, grow with him. Watch what God's doing. Look around right now. We're in the presence of the Almighty. Watch what God does. Watch what he's doing. It's an amazing thing. And then number three, learn how to praise him in it. Amen. Because he's richly deserving and greatly to be praised as the bible says so learn those areas of when we deal with god and who he is where he's at he's right in front of us and he'll show himself if you're ready but number one you got to get them shoes off because you're standing on holy ground with all that being said let's go to prayer lord as we bow before you we thank you for the opportunity we thank you for this time is truly amazing you with us now that we have the opportunity to serve and to honor you I pray that we'll do it rightly and justly let us be a light and testimony to those we come in contact with let us be uplifting and encouraging loving and compassionate and Lord ultimately they see you in us and because of that lives can be changed and souls can be saved but, Lord, let us be used in your lives for thy honor and thy glory. Thank you for this opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen and good afternoon. Amen. Well, I tell you what, some of you got to come in and listen to the choir sing tonight a little bit. Amen. I think they were glad to be back. <laughs> they actually all got thrown the curve. If you don't believe me, ask Miss Amy. <laughs> Laura got to tell her tonight, Mama, you need to sing up a little bit. <laughs> so that, that, that was pretty good. That, that was good to have that. But yes, choir practice has started. Let's see. I told him, I said, we have seven songs, seven weeks, and it'll be Christmas. Everybody saying, where's the mother two months? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, they'll be here before you know it. There's such stuff as... 
Veterans Day is coming up. Yeah. Thanksgiving's coming up. All that stuff will be Arkansas here. Festival. By the time we get all this done, Danny, you may be here soon. <laughs> I, I, I sing solo. Solo, nobody solo hears nobody me. Can hear. <laughs> Just don't let him drive the van. <laughs> I don't yes, it was. It, it was. it was great tonight to be back and, and getting in choir practice. And I know there were some of the young ones that was glad too, I think, to be back in choir practice. Yeah. Miss Irene was here. We got to have her friends here tonight. Yeah. And Carol and all those. And yes, all sir. these other ladies that's sitting over here. We got all of them up there. And it's it's going to be fun. And I love it when you can have a little bit of fun in choir practice. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, praising God. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's yeah. what all this is about, some music for praising God. And that's what we're going to do right now. Glory to his name. If y'all would, glory to his name. Each two. Stand with me.
Amen. He said, where does he leave those marks at, preacher? In his word. Amen. 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 What a great opportunity. As we're looking forward to some things like fish fry. Amen. I like it. Anybody else in here like the fish? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. That means what goes with that fish fry, we're going to need some coleslaw, and some, um, we're going to do some fries and things like that, fish some fish baked beans. Oh, and that's fun. Fun. Hush, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, all I get. Now we got that going on. Well, we ain't had enough of the seafood apparently this month because we're going to end off on Labor Day. We're going to have us one in their low country malls. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's in other words, uh, we're going to be one of them shrimp malls. Now it's not just shrimp. It's going to be that crawfish in there. That crawfish you got to southern fried down in Louisiana. You know, we'll get that in there, go get that there. corn. You know, gotta get corn in there, gotta get them taters in there and all like that, you know. And make them good. Amen. Amen. Now, I got a brother that's got this big old pot. And it sits around most of the time. Except on Labor Day it'll be good news. <laughs> Amen. And uh, it's so big it takes uh, at least two or three of us to carry that thing in there and put it out on that table that drains it all out. And then uh, we'll sit back and we'll whew, praise God for what God's doing with us. Amen. Amen. So I'm looking forward to that. Matter of fact, uh, if y'all don't know Tony Sackers, you might grab a little of that and sprinkle that on there. I like that too. So amen. But anyways, that is on Labor Day. So we got a few things there to celebrate, but also what's thrown in there. The last Tuesday of the month, we're going to go over and put some Bibles together, and I like that too. So it's, it's really important for us to do that. Like I said, where we went to church Wednesday night, it's called Fisherman's Baptist Church. And uh, one of the things we share with that church, other than the Word of God, they also are big supporters of BNL too. And so uh, I like to go over and put them Bibles together. And if you hadn't ever done it, come on over here at 9 o'clock Tuesday morning. We'll make our way over there. And then, of course, Brother Alex, we wouldn't be good Baptists. We didn't eat. Oh, we always eat before we come back home. Oh, Amen. And so we do that that last Tuesday of the month. And these are things that we got on our calendar. So a lot to celebrate, a lot to look forward to. And so that's what we do with it. Amen. But in that, isn't it good that we got a God that loves us beyond Amen. all measure? Amen. Now, look around. You see what we got? Because God gave it to us. Amen. There ain't a thing in the world we have that God hasn't given to us. Amen. And in the process of that, now we've come to the part of the service right now where God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. All about attitude. You know, if you're grudgingly putting it in there, it's the wrong attitude. Do it with, the, with, with some rejoicing, amen? Because God blessed you. And it's a way to show how good God's been to you, amen? And then he can take what you give and he uses that brother Alex in ways that keeps lights on, that keeps doors open, that keeps us going forward in a lot of different areas, amen? amen. And it's like camp. You know, when we had camp rolling around, Brother John, people stepped up and gave to that thing. I was talking to Vern just a few moments ago in the wonderful world where we are uh, able to do other things, Brother Tim, because of how people have given. <coughs> Amen. It's wonderful. So as we get to the offering table tonight, uh, we're getting ready to give. Just remember, God gave it to you. And what a blessing it is. With that being said, Danny, thank you. Praise God. Our Father in heaven, Lord, Lord, we come here as any people. But Lord, we want to thank you for the blessings you give us. Yes. Lord, we want to lift you up, and we want to be a light in this dark world. We want everything to be about you, nothing to be about us. Yes. Lord, we also ask you to be with our pastor. We know, Lord, he's got too much sun, but Lord, we know you can take care of it all. Yes. Lord, we ask you also to give us the words we need to hear. But not just the words, give him the courage to speak the words. Lord, let us listen to it with open ears. Forgive us all when we fail you. And Lord, if there's one person here that don't know you, don't let them leave tonight without knowing you. Because none of us can promise our next prayer. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
got your Bibles with you tonight in the book of John, chapter number 18. John, chapter number 18. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for that. Matter of fact, one thing I forgot to mention. It's this Saturday, is it, Brother Glenn? Yes, oh, sir. Comes. Yes, sir. Amen. Normally, that's why y'all got to write stuff down in front of me. Y'all know I got a short memory. I don't know what I do. I learned that uh, my mind ain't what it once was and things like that. For you overcomers, I appreciate you supporting that and coming to that because what that does is that gives other people some strength. I mentioned this morning about Miss Linda singing that song. <coughs> After she sang that song last Saturday, uh, Sunday morning, uh, Miss Audrey came up to me and she said that was just what I needed. Hit the spot, hit the spot, didn't it, sister? Hit the spot. Well, you weren't the only one. My mama down here, she been bawling her eyes out and everything, and she said, you know, I just really needed that song this morning. Well, ain't nobody can put it in the right perspective. I could have sung that song, but it would not have had the same impact. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But Miss Linda is right there where you ladies are, and she knows where you're at, and, and it really hits home that way. Amen. So thank God. We don't want to ever overlook or forget about our overcomers. Amen. And so we thank God for them. Be very much in prayer for all the ministries of the church. We've got some youth uh, programs coming up and things that they're already planning. And I know Brother Mike, y'all excited about that, and I'm excited about y'all doing that, rewarding those kids for their faithfulness to the house of the Lord. Amen. And what a great opportunity. So be very much in prayer for all these things. But you know, coming to God's house is a blessing. Amen. Being able to be here. Thank God for that opportunity. I'll be the first to tell you I missed y'all Wednesday night. It is good to get away. It's good to have a little vacation, this, that, and the other. But it sure is good to come home. Yeah. Uh, my baby girl, she had never seen the ocean before. That's how long it's been since I've been to the beach. Uh, she wasn't even born last time I went to the beach. And so we took uh, the trip down there. It's about 12 years ago, I guess it was, when we went to the beach the last time. And as we were making our way back, she had said midweek, she says, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> well, I don't know how it can work that out. It's you know so much night staying at this place. You know, we're going to make a way to you know. I said, uh, anyways, but we cross that Tennessee line. And she says, you know, it feels good to be coming back home. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It does feel good, good to go home. Amen. It sure does. So uh, y'all be very much in prayer for what God's doing here, though, because I want lives to be touched and something to be saved. But ultimately, we're growing together. And that's, the, that's really the purpose of the church. A lot of times, people talk about, well, so many, so many. He who witness souls is wise. But the church's responsibility or purpose is to look after one another. Amen. To care one for another. Amen. Amen. The souls will come from that. Don't worry about that. Right. You see, we as individuals, we reach out to win souls. But the church's responsibility is to look after the flock, the people of the church. What a great opportunity that is. Now, with all that being said, go to John 18 and verse number 28. John 18, verse number 28. We'll start reading right there tonight and go to the end of the chapter. He says, Then led they Jesus from Siaphas under the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. They're telling you a lot right there. <laughs> they didn't mind taking you down there, but we ain't going in. Uh -uh. They ain't going to go in there because we can't eat the Passover. We're religious people. Chalk that up. Remember that. We're going to come back to it. Read on. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? Then answered and said unto him, uh, They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Huh. Now in case you're wondering, a malefactor, they're using this terminology, and I'll just give you the definition in case you didn't know it. But a malefactor, 
One who has committed a crime, a criminal, a wrongdoer, or evildoer, one who does evil or injury to another, opposed to a benefactor. Now, read the verse again. They answered and said unto him, If we're not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. That's like saying something and not saying anything. That's double speak. Yeah, that's right. Politicians do it all the time. Yes, sir. They get asked a question. Well, see, the method of the process is in the delinquency of the, of the service that is at hand from, from the object that has to be gone forward with is very needful for this outcome. <laughs> that's right. What did I just hear? Well, if he wasn't a malefactor, we wouldn't have brought him up to you. But what has he done? What crime has he committed? Don't really have an answer on that one, do they? Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. So if he's broken your law, do it according to your law. By the way, there's a biblical purpose right there, and we're going to get to that too. Let's read on. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Huh. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should, uh, that he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall, and again... And called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Hmm. Who have you been talking to, buddy? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it uh, thee, thee of me? Pilate answered him, Am I a Jew? What am I, what, all these word games everybody's playing right here. <clears throat> you know? Now, give it a direct answer, a straight answer. Jesus knows what he's in right in the middle of right here. You know, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? He didn't find it out from them other than saying he's a male factor. Amen. Didn't get no answer on that. And now he's trying to find out from Jesus, what have you done, buddy? Tell me. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I might not be delivered to thee, uh, de delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom not from hence. Now Jesus told him without telling him. Now I get it, Father don't understand, but we ought to understand what Jesus is saying. The reason why they delivered him is because they have rejected him. They want no part of him. He went unto his own, his own received him not. Amen. They rejected him. They refused him. They denied him. And by the way, there's a lot of people that deny him today, even though they make money off of his name. Don't think it goes unheard of or without repercussion. God's keeping record. God's watching. He's seeing all this stuff. Read on. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Hmm. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and then called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou a king of the Jews? And Jesus answered and said, Thou sayest that this thing that, uh, or the, of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? And thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. But what hast thou done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. Verse 37 says, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king of the Jews then? A, a, a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I unto the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Amen. And we'll get to that too. Amen. Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when he had said
said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and says unto them, I find no fault at all. Ain't nothing wrong here. But ye have a custom, and I want you to underline that this the message tonight is entitled, But Ye Have a Custom. There's things that people do. By the way, there's people in churches have customs of what they do. And a lot of things that people do have no clue or idea why they do them. Right, amen. We ought not just do things because that's the way we do it, preacher. Amen. That's right. I've heard that for many, many years. I've been in church my entire life, and there's a lot of customs that have adapted to church people that we ought to check into on why we do what we do. Amen. But ye have a custom. <coughs> but ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber, and they all knew it. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to the, uh, speak to, in the message tonight to the hearts. I pray, Lord, that you'll have your will and way in every aspect of it. Lord, lead God and break in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Go back with me to verse number 28. Very powerful passage of scripture right here. A lot of things to cover. I don't know we'll get through it, but we'll get what we can. He says, Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment. So they took him up there. They were going, in. Uh -uh. No, sir. They ain't going in there. Uh -uh. You know why? Because we can't eat the feast of the Passover. That will taint us. We can't go in there. They're being religious. Very religious. Doing the religious thing. <whistles> Psalms 35 verse 15. But in my adversity they rejoiced. And gathered themselves together. Yea, the objects gathered themselves together against me. And I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not and with hypocritical mockers and feast. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my darling from the lions. Oh, they did all this being hypocrites in their feast. We got the Passover coming up. We, we can't partake in that. It's going to taint us. Isaiah chapter 1, go there with me. Verse 10 says, Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give, give an ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? To have church. Just to have church is a wrong reason to have church. I'll reiterate it. To have church just to have church is no reason to have church. I got Bible on it. I'm not saying it boldly because I don't know what I'm talking about. Going through the motions is not a benefit to any one of us. Just going through, well, at least they're going to church. That right there is not a good statement. At least they're going to church. Nope. You ought to go to the house of God for the right reasons. For the right purpose. Got to do the right things. God says right here, they're having church just to be having church. Isaiah 10, hear the word of the Lord. Ye rulers of Sodom, give ear unto the law of our God. Ye people of Gomorrah, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? Say the Lord, I'm full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I delight in, not in the blood of bullets or in the lambs of, or, 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 or of the heat goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath acquired this at your hand to tread my courts? What are you doing to my house, he says. Yep. You just go through the motions? You just carry it on acting like everybody else? You've got a custom. Well, that's just what we do, preacher. That's not a reason to show up at the house of God. Amen. Just because we have a custom. Do you know why we're here? you know the reasons and the purpose of why we come to the house of God? Read on. This ain't my word. It's God's word. 
Bring no more vain oblations, he says. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the callings of assemblies. You know why the world out here says, I know you Christians out there. And guess what? There's no difference between us and you. I ain't no worse than y'all Christians are. Because guess what? We're doing the same things. Yet we come to the house of God singing, oh, how we love Jesus. And act as if all of a sudden everything's just changed. Because we walk through the doors. God ain't about what's front, phony and front. Right. Let me tell you something, other. I like what's real. Matter of fact, if y'all wondering what kind of milk to give me, give me real country milk. Praise God. Yeah. That artificial milk, don't want it. Mm -hmm. Amen. I like 100%. Matter of fact, if y'all drink diet drinks, help yourself. Amen. I want the real stuff. Amen. If I'm going for sugar, I'm going for sugar. Say amen right there. Amen. 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 Sugar me up, baby. I like what's real. I want what's real. You know, Miss Claudia, a lot of people do lip service. I love you, baby. Love you. <laughs> it ought to be real, amen. Guess what? God wants what's real, too. He says, look, these vain oblations y'all are doing, it, it, it's a waste of time. Just going through the motions here. It's not my word, it's his. Yeah. Bring no more vain oblations, he says. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the callings of assemblies, I cannot away with. You know, I like it when God shows up in the house of the Lord. Amen. When it gets on, Brother Mike, I heard your testimony the other night, brother, and it blessed my heart. Wow! God's in that. Amen. Amen. Means something. What we do in the house of the Lord ought to mean something. Your new moons, your appointed feast, my soul hated. You're a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So guess what he's saying right here? They're taking Jesus unjustly down to the hall of judgment. Marching him right in there. But we can't go in. We can't go in. It's going to cost us from taking the Passover. Well, I got news for you. Take the Passover and God ain't honoring it. That's right. You think this is a game? I'm serious on what he's saying right here. And then right there, he's calling them out. Oh, we can't go in there. No, that would defile us. No, 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 no. What you do. Your attitudes, your actions, those are the things that defile you. Amen. Yeah. Not because you walked into the judgment hall. Right. God help. Jeremiah 7, 8. Verse 11 says, Behold, ye trust in lying words. You know, the greatest lie that you can ever tell is to yourself. That's right. Ha, I'm all right. Me and God's got an understanding. How many of y'all ever, ever heard that one? Yeah. Amen. You better check that understanding. You may not be as much on the understanding side of God as you think you are. That's right. Come on. You see, lying words, he says, that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? Right. Come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. Does this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Amos chapter 5, verse number 21. I hate. These ain't my words. These are God's words. This is what he's saying here. I hate. I despise your feast. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take, you, take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vile. But we're having church, preacher. 
Bless God, we're having church. If you're just having church to have church, you best close the doors and go home. Amen. God has told you you're wasting your time. Right. Michael, chapter 3, verse 10. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. Boy, they make these big old spectacles, don't they? The heads, therefore, judge for reward, and the priests, therefore, teach for hire, and the prophets, thereof, divine for money. You know, when I got in the ministry, one of the things my mother said to me, she said, the people are going to want to give you some money. And you're going to be tempted to say, no, 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 don't, you know. She said, your, your dad and I did that once, and somebody jumped up and said, don't you dare, you're robbing me of a blessing. So you learn how to take it and do all that. But at the same time, I was taught, Brother Alex, it's never about the money. Because the day it ever becomes about the money, then it's not about God. And we're here for the wrong reasons. Amen. When I was talking to the men, and they can verify this, it's up to them to say what they want to say. When I was talking to the men and everything, the very last subject that ever come up, and they brought it up, they said, well, how much will it take to get you here, Brother Shane? How much... Well, you need week in and week out. I said, well, brothers, the Bible says you're obligated to take care of it. Now, however y'all want to do that, that's between you and the Lord. Did I say that, Brother Alex? You in the room. Yes. I never said no fear. They said, how about this? Does this sound good to you? It sounds fine to me, brother. Amen. And we went on from there. Never has it been about the dollars. And never will it ever be about the dollars. Because that is no big deal with God. Matter of fact, smells up his nostrils. You see, when we start making the house of God and the business of God into something that it's not, we're so far away from God, we don't even realize where we're at. Now here they are, they're going through the motions, they're bringing Jesus in. I can give you Matthew chapter 23, and I don't want to. But you write these verses down, Matthew 23, verse 23 through verse number 28, and Matthew 27, verse number 1 through verse number 7, where, Jude, where Judas right here tried to take and return the money. They said, oh, they didn't mind giving it to him, but they sure wouldn't take it back because it's blood money. Let me let you on a little secret. They were still guilty for paying it. Ooh! Just because they didn't take it back, didn't let them off the hook. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. Amen. See, it's important here. There's so much about this. Because a lot of times we do it because of our custom. We got a custom here. This is the way we do it. We're accustomed to these things. Acts chapter 10, go there with me. Peter learned a very valuable lesson about customs. You sleep. And in that, he saw where God had prepared for him an unclean thing. Hmm? Y'all remember the story? Peter was going to eat it because I said, no unclean things are touch his lips. He forgot who he was talking to. So the Lord put him in his place. Don't you dare ever say anything I prepared is unclean. Hmm. Peter's learning some lessons here. Say amen. We'll pick up in Acts chapter number 10, verse number 28. See, there's a reason. God's preparing Peter because of a challenge he's fixing to have to endure. And Oh, oh, some of that pride. Yeah. Sometimes, oh, swallowing that pride gets a little bit tough. Hmm? Exactly what it's fixed to have to do. Look what he says. Verse 28. He said unto them, Ye know not how that it, it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Oh, they live by that. Oh, that's a serious thing. But they used it, Brother David, in a way that it's a lot. Look! Wait a minute. 
Right. You remember the you remember the guy that fell amongst the thieves? That's right. And the Levite and, and the priests come by, the Samaritan come by. Yeah. Well, you know, he's an unclean thing. I can't get my hands dirty. Unclean. I've seen too many churches over the years <clears throat> look down their nose at these little dirty kids. And stir up a stink. And say how those little kids need to be gotten out of there. Church is dying, brothers and sisters. And say our ours was, don't misunderstand me. But I know a lot of churches right now that are dying because they do not care for little kids. Get them out of here! And now there's a bunch of white-haired people. It's not even a bunch because they're dying off. And now here they are. Let me tell you something. You were pretty stinky too before you met the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Before you found Jesus, you needed a pretty good bath too, say amen right there. Right. Oh, preacher, I never was like, huh. come back at me like that. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, oh, wretched man that I am, read your Bible. What you might think is good and what you might think smells good ain't with God. Ain't with God. Because with God, all have sinned come short of the glory of God. Amen. All stink up those nostrils. Right. And the only thing that makes a difference, Miss Audrey, between me and the drunk on the street is the grace of the Lord. And thank God for his grace. Amen. Now he puts things in the right perspective. And now as he's delivered, look what he says. He says, look, I used to, you know, as Jews to keep company or, or to come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You're learning, Peter. You're coming along, buddy. You'll get there. <clears throat> Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, As soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. See, Peter don't have the rest of the story. All he knows is that God showed him in dream. Be careful what you're calling common and unclean. If I have done it, it ain't common and it ain't unclean. No. No. Peter's learning. He said, I just want to know why did, why did you send for me? What's the deal here? And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting. While you were eating, Peter. I was fasting unto this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard. Thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Yeah. That's saying something right there, brothers and sisters. Amen. It's right in the presence of the Almighty right there, what Cornelius did. He said, then, he said, send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who when he is come, when he cometh shall speak unto thee. And immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. So we said you came. That's, that's why. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. So we're calling this out to find out what God's going to use you for, Peter. Tell us, brother. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is in no respect of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Amen. In every nation. Is that the word of God? What he said, 
God's trying to teach us something here, brothers and sisters. He's trying to show us some things. Here these people thought they were right. Well, we're not going to go in there. We're going there. We're going to, we're going to taint ourselves. We can't take Passover if we go in there. You were already tainted by your attitude. Amen. You're bringing an innocent man to put him to death. And you know that you are. Just because he doesn't fit your criteria. Just because he doesn't fit in your society. Just because he doesn't fit in your thought process. Remember, even the disciples, as Jesus is ascending up into heaven, they're still asking, God, are you going to restore the kingdom at this time? What does that tell you? They're still not thinking right and properly. Right. They're not focused on the things of God as they should. So here we are, verse 29 through 32, look at it with me. But then went out and went to them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? And they answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor. You know, just by saying that word, look, you're not answering the question, you're sidestepping it. What do you think we bring somebody to you that was not guilty? That's basically what they're saying. He wasn't a malefactor. We would not have delivered him unto, you, unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. And the Jews therefore said unto him, It's not lawful for us to put, a man, put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which, uh, which he spake and signifying what death he should die. They couldn't take Jesus back with them and put him to death. They had no more law. Huh. They were smart enough to know that, Brother Mike. Yeah. They had no more law. Huh. John 19, 12, and from thence Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. They had to pressure Pilate to do what Pilate did. Luke 23, verse 1 through verse number 5. But there's no law. Genesis 49, verse number 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. If you've got no law, you should have known if Jesus is revealing himself as the Son of God, you should have known. Because you knew all the way back in Genesis 49, when you had no law, child was there. That's Bible. But let's face it, they're not looking to the Word of God. They're not obeying God's Word. I'll read it again. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shadow come. And unto him shall he gather, shall the gathering of the people be. Hosea 3, verse number 4, I'll read it to you this way. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. Y'all listening? And without a prince, and without a sacrifice. Without an image, without an ephod, without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. What that means is that there's a period of time when they're not going to have their temple, their authority, their power, hmm? all those things that once upon a time was real big in Israel. We're all going to go to the wayside until, then he says, the latter days. You say, preacher, what does that mean? Well, when they begin to build that third temple, my blood gets to point. I get excited. That's what that means. Because that's the time frame he's talking about. Yep. Y'all with me tonight? Amen. That's Bible. And it'll happen, Miss Doors just like God said it would. Just like in the time when Jesus was right there, Brother Mike, they couldn't kill him. They had no lawgiver. Just like he said. 
When will the lawgiver be not there? When Shiloh come. So they had to rely upon somebody else outside of their realm to do the deed. Because they weren't able to. Right. Ooh, Isn't that an amazing thing? Matthew 20, verse 19. And shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. All this is according to the word of God. Just like God said. Verse 33 through 35. Look at it with me. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called the Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, says thou, uh, sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of, of me? And Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? And, and thine own nation and the chief priest had delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? They're kind of playing that word salad, like I said, you know, he's, you know, he wants to find out, he's trying to figure it out. Verse 36, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. I'll give you an answer there, Pilate. You want it? Here it is. My kingdom is not of this world. By the way, believers, that's why we're not a part of this world. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number four, chapter 6, verse number 14, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part he that, that is a believer with an infidel? We're not a part of. We don't belong to. There's places we don't belong in. There's things that we ought not be doing. Why? We're not a part of this world. That's why we use terms like pilgrims and sojourners. Things like that. What agreement hath the temple of God with the idols? Or for what, or what ye are, the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk in them, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Because of that, he says, Wherefore come, come out from among them, be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. God wants us to separate ourselves from all this stuff that is of the world. Now, there's places where we belong. And there's places where we don't belong. Yeah. Let me make it very plain and simple for you. Some of y'all may think it's all right. But how many of you in here tonight would want to see your preacher hanging out at the bar? Y'all wouldn't like that. Hmm? I'm just down there witnessing. I don't belong in there. That's not where I need to be. And by the way, if I don't need to be down there, you don't either. Okay. Amen. There are certain things that God doesn't want to be in our lives because of the damage, the harm. I've used the scenario before. I'm not a smoker and I'm not attacking anybody that is. Don't misunderstand me. But if I'm preaching to my kids and telling them, don't smoke, don't smoke, don't smoke, and daddy goes around the corner over here and lights up one, I lose all credibility. Amen. Amen. So if I warn my kids about don't be part of the world, and yet I go out there and I'm a part of the world, then Miss Linda, I've hurt my testimony. Amen. Come out from among them. Be separate, say the Lord. It's not my word. It's God's word. Now look, we're all a work in progress, and there's nobody in here perfect. So I'm not condemning anybody. Don't leave out here tonight and say that I am, because I'm not. God saves sinners. And what separates us from the drunk on the street is the grace of God. But what I'm trying to tell you here tonight is, as we are battling through these things, there's some things we ought to separate from. Amen. And do some things differently. Now, verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I'm a king. And this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness of the, uh, unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth me, or heareth my voice, he says. So he's asking a question. He said, look, who are you? What, well, what is the truth? Verse 38, Paul said unto him, what is the truth? Well, in John, chapter number 14, verse number 6, Jesus says, I am the truth. Amen. The way and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And he does. 
Now that brings us to the heart of the message tonight. Now I gave you all a lot. There's a lot to chew on, a lot of hard stuff I'm giving you tonight. But here's the heart of the message. Remember we're talking about customs. Verse 39. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the passing. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? There's a custom. Would it help you out with that pilot? I have the answer right here why they would not release Jesus. Not because he's guilty, but because he's innocent. Not because he's tainted, like they were in verse 28, but because he's pure. And he went on into the house of judgment. Right. Now, this custom that they had was established a long time before we ever got here. Some of y'all might have heard of terminology and may not have realized what that terminology actually meant. Tonight, I'm going to give it to you. Leviticus chapter 16. Go there with me. In Leviticus chapter 16 and verse number 5, the Bible says that he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids, talking about goats, of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself. Remember that back in those days those priests they had to get themselves clean before they could ever do the business of God, all right? And then as they got clean, then Brother Alex, they were ready to do God's business, all right? So let's move on. He says, which is for himself, and to make an atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and present them for the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, and one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. Have y'all ever heard the term scapegoat? Amen. We're here just a scapegoat. Do you know what a scapegoat actually means? We're going to find that out if you don't know. Stay with me. Read on. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon uh, which is, uh, which the Lord's uh, lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. Now, get what he says here. The lot that fell on him is for the Lord. The Lord. That, that, that's the one that represents the Lord. Okay, they bring that one to Aaron. Y'all with me? Let's read on. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, and one lot for the Lord, and the other for the lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. The one that was in representation of the Lord had to die. Scapegoat got to go free. Scapegoat got to go free. I've heard people use that term scapegoat. Well, I'm just being a scapegoat here. What that means is you've been set free. Now, if you've been using that wrongfully, now you know. Don't use it that way anymore. A scapegoat is one that gets to go free. It's not that you had done anything wrong. It's that somebody else stepped up and took your place. Now, Jesus is reminding him of a custom that they have. Now, Pilate is using that custom now. He's saying, hey, you have a custom. Who shall release unto you? And they started crying out for Barabbas. Yep. Well, just give us Barabbas. Let him go free. But he's a liar. It's okay. But he's a robber. He stole from you. But that's okay. He's not a good guy. It's okay. Let the bad dude go so that the righteous one will pay. Hmm. Luke chapter 2 verse 1. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree of, from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be 
past. Hmm. So in Leviticus chapter 16, we find out about scapegoat. So a custom was established. Luke chapter number 2, we find out that there was a decree that went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Hmm. Matthew 27, 15, now at the feast of the, of the governor was wont to release unto the, the people a prisoner whom they would, and they then had a notable prisoner called the Rabbis, and therefore when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? And for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, Have nothing to do with this just man. Everybody knew Jesus was righteous. Yeah. Everybody knew that he was all right to, he didn't deserve to be there. But yet he's the righteous sacrifice and we're the scapegoat. Luke chapter 23, verse number 17. I won't draw it all together, don't worry. I hear the wheels are clicking tonight, I hope so. Luke 23, verse 17. For of a necessity, he must release one unto them at the feast. It had to happen, this course. It was a necessity. It had to happen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Who knew no sin. That we might be made with the righteousness of God in Him. Colossians 2 16. Let no man therefore judge you in need or in dream or in respect of a holy day or in a new moon or of Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come. This deal of church, we need to understand why we come, and the reasons why we're here. Going through the motions, just offering a sacrifice, because that's what we do, is not a good reason to do it. We need to know why we do what we do. Well, the offer plate comes at this time. Well, the altar call is at this time. Well, the entrance is at this time. It, just going through the motions makes us empty. Right. Everything that God has established and set up is with reason and with purpose. When I turn to look at that cross right there, there's a reason for that cross. And it wasn't him. It's me. I preached a while back and I told you I'm the guy that's guilty and I am. He warned me in Genesis chapter 2. He warned me and yet I went my way and did my thing and in the process I defiled myself and I'm here to tell you we can talk about smacking Eve all we want to but you see it. You've done wrong. Own up to it. And now we're living in a day and a time or we're just going through the motions. Yep. And we think God's pleased with that. No, sir, no man is not. He's wanting people to be real. He wants people to be honest. He wants people to step forward. And when you sing, oh, how you love Jesus, mean those words. Amen. We go to our knees and pray. When you're at this altar, you need to remember, this is a holy place, amen. Hey, and when you pour out before God your prayers, your commandments, your, 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 your thoughts, your needs, it ought to mean something at this altar. Amen. Mm -hmm. Not just going through the motions. I'm here to tell you, this desk, this holy desk right here, it's got the word of God on it, Brother John, and that's what needs to be on this desk. Amen. It is an important part place 
that got set up a long time ago. Now, I'm not knocking all customs because like the custom they had of, of releasing, that brought out about the scapegoat. Amen. Matter of fact, if you go back into the Old Testament, you'll find out about this a little bit too. He established it a long time ago. But we need to know why we do what we do and the reasons of why we're going through that. And not just because granddad and grandma and they did this and they did that. I heard the story about them cutting off the butt end of the roast. They kept passing it back and passing it back. Finally they got back to great grandma and she said, Honey, the reason we did because we were so poor back in those days, we had a small pan and a big roast wouldn't fit in there. Makes sense. But they did it because of custom and tradition, and that's just the way we've done it for all these generations. So everything that we do should be with reason and with purpose. Amen. You understand our Lord and Savior came with reason and with purpose. He wasn't upset when they released Barabbas. It's what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Just the way it did. He knew that in Leviticus. Amen. Matter of fact, he knew that before the foundation of the world. Right. He knew many stories you would sin and you would need a Savior. And at the foundation of the world, he purposed he would come and die for you. And he did. And by the way, he knew the day you would accept him. And praise God for that too. That's right. Now as we get here to the place where we find ourselves, I give you a message like this tonight because I want to remind you of the days in which we live in. And there's too much fraud and lying and deceit that is amongst us. People are going through the motions, using lip service. Like God says, they're praising me with their mouth, but their heart's so far away from me. They're having church services, but they're empty. There's better not to even have the church service because they're empty. There's nothing in them. There's nothing to them. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to be a part of a church that just goes through the motions. Yes, sir. I don't want to just go through and open up the Bible at this time and have prayer at this time and we leave at the doors at that time and there we go. No, I want it to be real when we come in this house. Yes, I want us to, to really mean what we say. And when we pour it on the table, <laughs> let nothing be remaining. Let's put it all out there. <clears throat> So here's the deal. How many of us in here tonight believe time is short? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That window of opportunity is getting so small. I don't just want to go through the motions. I don't want to act like I'm something that I'm not. Trying to confuse or trying to manipulate, tell everybody, oh, look how holy I am. I'm not. The only difference for me and the drunk on the street is the grace of God. Thank God for what God's done for me. I'm glad that I'm the scapegoat. I'm glad that he's released me. Amen. And I get to go out into the wilderness and praise his holy name. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here tonight. Bring us to our knees. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. What page, Brother John? Page 278. 278. If that's going to be our chief come, whatever it needs, come on right now. Come on right now. Jesus is tenderly calling me wrong.
tell you, if you get in that old book and start studying out some of these things, you might be amazed at what God has for you. It's an amazing thing. Escape God. Escape God. That's <coughs> not true. I'll wear that name proudly. Amen. Because without that happening, I'd split it wide open. I'd be the sacrifice. And I'm here to tell you, I don't have the power to overcome it like Jesus did. I do now, because he gave that to me. Amen. I don't have it within myself. But also there's a unique part right there, and that is the relationship. And I thank God for that relationship. Amen. Because of that, it changes things. That's why that scapegoat got to go free. Amen. Thank God for that. Any good that God loves us so much to take our place. Amen. Don't deserve it. But thank God I got it. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate you being here, each and every one of you. Keep on keeping on, Brother Glenn. It's this uh, this Saturday, right? Yes, sir. That Saturday. you overcomers are overcoming. Yes, sir. Amen. So this Saturday, 10 o'clock? Yes, sir. Going to be here at the church? Yes, sir. Right in the back. Right in the back. Amen. Is that good? We're Baptist, man. We always got to somehow fit the food in there. Amen. You know, I went down this week and I try to blame it on Mike because he let me use his nice, comfy chairs and it's comfortable, Mike. I like that. I sit there and everything. But I saw that the, the week before you, you got pretty crispy too. Yeah. But you didn't come back hobbling like I have. Huh? I think you got a little more than I got. I stay a little, a little bit longer out there, do you think? Amen. But we're both red face. Amen. Well, wear it proudly, my brother. If you don't mind, Mike, just miss us in prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. Lord, we just thank you for the many, many blessings you give. Lord, I thank you for each and every one here. Lord, may you help us to be real. May you help us to yes. not just to say and do things because it's tradition. Yes. It's a religion. May we have a personal relationship with May we always strive for that. Lord, I ask that you be with those that are sick or hurting here tonight. Lord, just be with them. Help them. Lord, I lift up anyone here tonight that may not know you. Lord, may they get to know you before it's too late. If there's one here tonight that has fallen back, help them to draw close to you. Lord, I ask you to be with us the remainder of this week. Bring us back when we have to come back. And I ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.